Luxury home sellers, meanwhile, are reducing asking prices across the country. In January alone, over 4% of homes priced at $5 million and above were sold for less than their asking price. That is a massive increase compared to a year earlier. Joining me right now are the stars of Bravo's A Million Dollar Listing, New York stars, Ryan Serhant and Luis D. Ortiz. Good to see you guys. Thank you so Hello. much for joining us. Thank you very so, much. Ryan, what are you experiencing? You know this, obviously, firsthand. Mm -hmm. uh, you just sold an apartment in Lower Manhattan for almost $8 million, correct? Yes. Yeah, tell us about the market right now. Uh, I actually think that the market is in a pretty strong, great place. The difference now compared to a year ago is that people are actually trading. So people are willing to negotiate. And everyone says prices are being reduced. But what's really happening is it's an, an adjustment. It's like a chiropractor. You know, prices were just too inflated. Now people are actually willing to do deals where things are worth. An $8 million apartment will sell for eight. It's not going to sell for 10. And that's what people are starting to realize. So, but, but do you think it's a buyer's market today more so than it was like six months ago? It is definitely. Yeah, go ahead. Tell us, Luis. It's, uh, you know, I think that uh, because of the record breaking prices that uh, sellers were getting uh, two years ago, they are, they, they are still expecting to have some sort of the same results for their, for their, for their apartments. And I don't think that, you know, because of what the oversupply is in the market futures, uh, Buyers are, are a little bit more careful and a little bit more calculated, and they are not no longer paying the prices that they were paying before, and sellers are starting to, to see that. What, what do people want these days in a, in a luxury you know, apartment or home? What are they looking for? Are there other things that compensate you know, for, like, if you lower the price, but I need this? It, it depends. If it's a resale... They, they, they want things not just broom swept and, and as is condition. You know, they'll come in asking for, for stronger demands. So buyers can now start dictating closing dates. They'll start dictating maybe some closing costs here and there. Not so often, but we're starting to see that. If it's new construction in New York City, then you really start to play with closing costs and maybe some built-ins or other upgrades. And that's really just because of supply. In areas of the city where you have no supply, like if you go to the East Village, I was just talking to someone in the green room about right. that, there's, there's nothing. So if you go to the East Village, you have no control. The seller is really in control. So it's really about supply. Where else do you see the supply changes in the market right now? Let's take New York. I mean, a Midtown and Uptown is heavily filtered with supply. You have a lot of options. So if you're a 10 to $20 million buyer, even a $5 million buyer, there's a lot of things to choose from. Downtown, East Village, places like Greenpoint, Brooklyn, you, there's nothing to buy. Mm. So those things just move, move, move. We have a project in Greenpoint right now that we are just over 50% sold out that we have sold from my office in Soho. That's in wow. Greenpoint. <laughs> you didn't even yeah. go there, right? right? That's funny. But you go to 57th Street and you'll work with a buyer for three months and then they'll say, we're working on something together actually right now. And buyers walk around and then they go see other things for four days. And the price point is $15 million. Two years ago, you couldn't do that. You had a $15 million budget, you'd walk around for an hour, and then you've seen everything. Yeah, but some people feel like what we're seeing right now in terms of sellers taking their prices down is an indicator of what's to come. Is this the beginning of a larger sell-off in real estate right now, Luis? Well, I think that right now on the, on the $10 million plus market, you're seeing that, that buyers are seeing that the more they wait, the more inventory comes in the market, and the more that the inventory that's already on the market keep on dropping prices. And the ones that are not dropping prices are selling for uh, 15 to 20% discounts. So these buyers are not really desperate, and they can afford to wait, so they become more patient. And the more patient they become, the more the sellers get impatient. And then they start, the, the real sellers are starting to drop prices, and the ones that are not really you know, real sellers can actually either take it off the market or, or just wait. So nobody's really, uh, especially on that, on that end of the market, nobody's willing to budge. Is New York indicative of the rest of the country? What's going on across the country? It tends it, to be. Yes, it tends yeah. to be. So it's a similar situation. Yeah, it's a, there's, a, there's a ripple effect. You know, we have offices in, in Miami and L.A., and they, they, a month later, they'll call me, and they're stressing about the things that I was stressing about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And that's 10 to that. And now you seeing more supply on the market as people want to sell more? I mean, in terms of the seller right now, what are you seeing? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing people now who are actually, I, I love 2016. This is a great year because people are actually trading. That's a big difference. When the market is going straight up or straight down, yeah. 
someone is always being difficult, but the market is now, it's, it's kind of leveled off, so you've got people willing to sell and willing to buy, and that's what we want. Yeah, but same, same, and buyers question, are making offers, yes. same question as I asked Luis, I mean, uh, Ryan, do you think that this is the beginning of something bigger? Because people wonder if, in fact, these prices coming down means we're entering a period of just perhaps a, a, a tougher real estate market. No, absolutely you don't think not. So. No, I think people are watching the election heavily, and so I think people are kind of treading into November, seeing what's going to happen, because the election is a little bit weird and so they are yeah, they? they're confused and they're nervous especially <laughs> foreigners we deal with a lot of internationals in New York City and they are particularly concerned and they're watching and so they are making sure that they're making the right investment but I think that after November the market's going to really 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 bounce back and everyone that didn't buy between now and November is going to say ah I missed it again is there a candidate that you think is better for real estate than not <laughs> I don't understand Donald the question. Trump is a real estate tycoon so I mean if you if he wins what does that tell me about real estate I think that the real estate market will continue to stay strong no matter what happens. Uh, okay, well, you said people are looking at the election. They so. are. Okay. Yeah, people get nervous. Gentlemen, good to see you. Good to see Thank you, you so much. You. Ryan Serhant, Luis D. Ortiz. Be sure to tune in to the new season of Million Dollar Listing New York. It premieres next Thursday night on Bravo. We'll be there, guys. See you then.